Daniel Garcia was on Talk is Jericho this week, talking with Chris about the Jericho Appreciation Society and their big brawl that they had, the the arena anarchy and the arena shit and all that, the Kangle hat gimmick that they got going on and the sports entertainer stuff. All of that in this conversation was all well and good, but this particular clip here... Daniel Garcia talks about the time where he's out on the road traveling for the Indies with a car full of people coming back from a town about six hours away or so. They hit a patch of black ice and they get into a very bad car accident that could have easily been tragic. Check out this clip. Before, let's go back to this crash. What do you remember about the crash? Ooh, I, so I was sleeping in the back oh and I remember God. I woke up and we were just spinning and in, in my mind like it, it feels almost comical now i was just like oh man like here we go like strap in and i remember we crashed and like the sound was disgusting like just the ripping through the car you could like hear it it was nasty but after the crash it was almost like peaceful like it was you couldn't hear anything there was no traffic and i looked up at the front of the car and i see the people in the front and Puff is trying to break through the glass window to get out. And and Kevin Bennett, he goes, Daniel, are you okay? And I'm like, I went, yeah, I'm good. I think I broke both my legs, though. That That's exactly how I said it. You're totally in shock. Yeah, I was, like, so at peace. Yeah, this very easily could have been bad fucking news for, for the people in this car. And, uh, you know, it's awesome that, every, you know, the wrestling community kind of banded together and did, started a GoFundMe for these guys to help cover their medical bills and get them all back up on their feet. It's a miracle nobody got hurt. The guardrail cut through the car right down the center. So they crashed head on. Right? They're a car, they're traveling, and there there's a guardrail head on. And it cut through the fucking middle. That's like some final destination shit. That's almost unimaginable. If there had been like a, if they were the it sounded like there's four people in the car, so two on this side, two on this, and it just split them down the middle. Can you imagine if there was like a guy, a fifth guy in the middle of the back seat? He would have been he would have been impaled by this fucking railing, dude. This is nasty. And and Chris talked about, you know, uh, when he was trying to put himself over for donating to this, um, but he uh, had mentioned that it could be anybody because he used to take those car trips back in the day. And not only, you know, do wrestlers do the car trips now when they hit the towns, uh, certainly not as much since the whole uh, pandemic situation, but... Uh, as wrestlers hit the towns, they travel in these cars and they do long trips sometimes. And, you know, even back in my day, like in my rapper days, you know, I'd travel like just, just around the territory, you know, I wasn't traveling the country or anything, but just traveling two, three, four, five hours to a show. And then back from a show with a car full of people, um, you know, in the middle of winter time, sometimes like any one of those could be and that's not the same i mean anytime you get into a car there's a risk of an accident but you pile these guys into into cars like these and you know they're out on the road for long stretches of time it's just it's it's the way of the business and it's it's great to hear not just the fantastical story of this fucking railing and paling a car and how everybody lived and and made it through with injuries that they were able to come back from and, and still be able to wrestle but just the fact that the wrestling community came together in that situation and they were able to get these guys back on their feet and donate to them and stuff like that. Um, it's one thing that I really love about doing this show is the wrestling community, as big as wrestling is, you know, and, and we all kind of mock the IWC, the internet wrestling community. Well, there is an internet wrestling community. It's every wrestling fan that's active and vocal on the internet. And it really is kind of a small community. It's not like we all know each other, um, but we all, everybody knows everybody in wrestling, if that makes sense. You know, when everybody's familiar with all the news people and everybody's familiar with all the dirt sheet writers and everybody's familiar with the, the indie promotions and the territories. And it's all, it's just such a tight knit circle and everybody's kind of interconnected and, 
you know, there's that that old Kev Bacon thing. You know, everybody's within. You can tie any actor to within six movies of Kevin Bacon, um, of war, you know working with Kevin Bacon in a movie. But I think you know you could probably tie any wrestler to any other wrestler within three steps. You know, it's a very tight knit community. So I really love just being you know even in the smallest way possible being a part of that and just being you know it's such a close community. It's, it's um just awesome that we're able to do things like that for people when those things pop up so um just a great story to daniel garcia one of my favorites i fucking love daniel garcia and he talked about in this you know uh you know he even said uh in the podcast with jericho he's like when tony khan put me in the main event it was like my first match second match in aew he's like i was even thinking like what is this guy thinking and um you know, Jericho kind of gave him credit, like, dude, you know, Tony watches the Indies, he knows what you're capable of. Daniel Garcia, to me, he's like a mix between Brian Danielson and Randy Orton. He's a young Danielson and Orton hybrid. Watch this guy. Watch this guy as he he is one of the future top stars in this entire business, I promise you. Daniel Garcia is a fucking beast. He's so fun to watch in the ring. He's he's he's, he's very technically sound. Um, that's where he gets a lot of the Daniel Bryanson from. Is is his in ring work? Um, but then his facial expressions, uh, just the way he carries himself in the ring, like he's so good at such a young age. He's very Orton esque in his facials and and in his selling and in that kind of stuff and you just watch this fucking kid this kid is going and that's why he's getting all these big main events same with 2.0 2.0 is nothing to shake a stick at either that's why that trio was put together that's why they keep getting all these main event gigs that's why jericho is taking them under his wing because jericho and brian danielson literally fought over daniel garcia not like fist fight but like they had to like talk it out i had to like you know like they're picking draft picks or something like he was a hot everybody wanted garcia and that's because he's highly talented um so i i really have high hopes for him on the roster and i think he's gonna be uh you know give him 10 years he's going to be a major player a big time talent so uh great interview go back and listen to that and just get a feel for him because i feel like he kind of comes off as the quiet guy a little bit um but you'll, you'll get a better feel for his personality and what's under the hood there uh when you listen to that combo with chris but uh that's all i got to say about that one and uh don't just be careful when you're out there driving guys you know all you indie workers out there when you're traveling the roads just be careful okay just be careful Let me tell you something, brother. You can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on this channel, dude. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to take your vitamins and say your prayers, brother.